Are you looking for a quick yet precise guide on how to create a codebook? Then you've hit the jackpot. In this video, I'll explain what a codebook is, guide you step by step through the creation process without overwhelming you and even share how you might be able to skip most of the effort altogether while improving the validity of your qualitative data analysis. And now, without further ado, welcome to Shrive. What is a codebook? Before we dive in, let's clarify that we are discussing codebook creation within qualitative research. That means that the data you will be analyzing can be interview transcripts, documents, reports, videos, social media postings, and so on. A codebook is essentially a coding manual that provides structured guidelines for assigning categories which represent broader thematic groupings to units of analysis within a qualitative data set. Each category or theme consists of specific codes, which serve as labels for classification. Using a codebook is more common in research projects that analyze qualitative data, but do so from a more quantitative perspective. I'll explain what this means in a second. In hardcore interpretive qualitative studies, for example, when using grounded theory or reflexive thematic analysis, a codebook can also be used, but its purpose here is a little different. Let's start with the quantitative way of analyzing qualitative data. This is done in methods such as quantitative content analysis or deductive thematic analysis. I've made tutorials for both of these methods, so please feel free to check them out. In a quantitative content analysis, you assign small bits of your qualitative data to certain categories. In the case of this method, you do not develop these categories yourself. Instead, you define them prior to your analysis. And how do you do that? With a codebook. The codebook contains all categories and descriptions of the categories, specifying how units of analysis, for example sentences, tweets or images, should be classified. The codebook may also define a numerical value, an ID, that you can assign per category. Category 1, Category 2, Category 3 and so on. Let's look at a concrete example to make this clearer. Imagine we want to analyze tweets about COVID-19, specifically focusing on misinformation as part of our research question. A codebook designed for this study would need to contain various categories of misinformation commonly found on social media. Here's an example from an actual codebook by Memon and Carly. The authors defined 16 categories into which they classified their material. For each category, the codebook provides a detailed description, examples and justifications for why a particular example was classified under that category. I've linked their complete codebook in the description below this video. Before we dive into the next part, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. It really helps me out a lot. When should you create your own codebook? You should only consider developing a completely new codebook if you've thoroughly researched existing options and found that none of them match your study's specific needs or can easily be adapted. But what exactly does a good codebook look like? Think of your codebook as a detailed instruction manual for your research project. Start with a brief introduction. In this part, quickly explain what your codebook is designed for. If it's based on an existing codebook, make sure you mention which one and describe the data set you use to develop it. Second overview of categories. Include a table summarizing all categories. Sometimes a codebook could have two levels, with categories and subcategories or main codes and subcodes. Whether you call it codes, categories or themes depends on the method. In content analysis, researchers typically refer to categories. In thematic analysis, it's themes and so on. This means if you are creating your own codebook, you should stick with the vocabulary of the method you want to apply the codebook to. Third description of categories. Categories can originate in two ways, from existing literature or a previously established codebook. In this case, provide the citation or developed based on your own data set. If you identify a new category during your analysis, you can add it to the codebook. Each entry in the codebook should consist of title of the category, description in your own words, 
explaining what the category represents and the conditions under which this category applies, corresponding subcategories that might be part of this category and what they represent, unit of analysis, for example, tweet, comment, video or text snippet, at least one example, preferably several, from a real data set. Explanation of why the examples were assigned this category or subcategory. 4. References. Finally, list all sources used in your codebook just as you would in any scientific work. Using an existing codebook. Creating a new codebook from scratch can be time consuming. That's why it's worth checking for existing codebooks first. Where to find existing codebooks? Open Science Databases. Many researchers share datasets and resources, including codebooks, to support the academic community. You can check out Zenodo or OSF Open Science Framework. Contacting authors. If a paper references a codebook but doesn't provide it in an appendix, try emailing the authors. Researchers often appreciate interest in their work and may be happy to share their codebook. Adapting a codebook. If you find a relevant codebook, you can modify it to fit your study. However, make sure to cite the original source and document any changes you made. If you include your adapted codebook in an appendix, provide a detailed explanation of modifications. Codebooks in inductive qualitative research. In the beginning, I mentioned that codebooks may also be used in inductive qualitative research such as Glaserian grounded theory or reflexive thematic analysis. The main difference here is that you are not looking for predefined categories. Instead, you start with a blank canvas and create all categories based on your data. The codebook is simply a tool to document your categories. This will help you and others, such as collaborators or reviewers, to better understand how the categories were built. You are essentially creating a documentation of all your categories and examples. But in contrast to quantitative content analysis and deductive thematic analysis, you are doing it during and after the analysis rather than before. A well-structured codebook is essential for conducting research that aims to assign qualitative data to predefined categories or themes. Whether you create one from scratch or adapt an existing codebook, being systematic, clear and consistent is key to ensuring valid and replicable results.